And Teresa, if you can just um, let people in Meetup know that we are live on Facebook and I can give you the link in chat. Hold on. Okay. I mean, it should be on there, but just in case. That's it. And I do not have rights to this music. Um, this is my Pandora subscription. So I just kind of wanted to let everybody know that. Awesome. Let everybody know that. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> yes, gotta swear is what it is. Awesome, so we have that going. Hi everyone. Hello Facebook land. Thanks for joining us. All right. So the first thing I'd like to say is welcome to everyone, whether you're on Zoom or if you are on Facebook, welcome. And for those of you that are wondering, how come some people are on Zoom and they have a link? Uh, this is my Lotus Academy members. Um, you know, you guys know I've been talking about it like since May started. It's the Lotus Academy and you're more than welcome to join us. It's not exclusive at all. Uh, there's a link that I'm hoping um, I can drop for you guys a little bit later on or you can just reach out to me and I can give you the link so you can learn more about joining and you get member perks like this, okay? So tonight is, and I have to remind everybody that I do not have rights to music. It is my Pandora subscription. So I just wanted to say that. Okay, put on relaxation radio, not world beats because they're just like going crazy with it. Uh, this is supposed to be our monthly Facebook chat. I can't find Rob. Either he's in with a client that kind of went over or a class went over. I actually don't know what his schedule is today, but um, I'm pretty sure I can handle this topic on my own. It's about honoring the divine feminine. So I think I'm going to be pretty okay with this, especially since, as you guys know me, I have very strong goddess feminine energy that I'd love to share some things with you about the goddesses, about the divine feminine, how they came into my life, when they came into my life, and just uh, the things that I started doing when I started working with them. So get your notepads, your pens out. If you want to record anything, you're more than happy. You're more than welcome to. Um, I'm always happy to share information. So last month we had Rob and Carlos do a wonderful talk about the divine masculine and what life is like for them as a divine masculine. And as we discovered as women, we found it hard, right? If you guys, if some of you might've not been here last month, but just for me to recap, they were uh, essentially talking about how the stereotype has been hard for them living as divine masculines because there was so much pressure on them to be at their very best. And just, you know, in a way being on that pedestal didn't allow them to be human and just really have faults or whatever because they were just so greatly judged you know um for what they went through i think it was you know uh, rob that had said you know if i mess up with a woman she then blames all of mankind <laughs> you know all all other men will are now dogs because i'm a dog or whatever and he's like but you don't find that with women you don't find men doing that with women oh she's nuts they're all nuts you know um it's kind of like uh two-sided so from that perspective, I want to say that women, 
we are very intricate creatures. And I think that for a lot of women, they don't take the time to really discover, you know, the archetypal principles that are running their lives. So it's been my, one of my journeys and my platforms that I've created where I want to speak out about the goddess divine and about how the goddesses act through us. And a long time ago, I identified that the goddesses fall into four elements, earth, wind, earth, air, fire, water. We're all different goddesses. And it's very easy to spot the goddess archetype of someone based off of their energy. So for instance, I am definitely in the lineage and the history of the fire goddesses. Big surprise, right? I have a lot of passion. Yep, Beth's putting her hand up, right? Um, we are spicy to say the least. So if you are in the fire goddesses lineage, you will have fight in you. And it's just, it can't go away. You know, for a lot of fire goddesses, um, we try to fit in a box. We really do. We've tried the roles of mother and wife and good employee, and we do well for some time. <laughs> and then the true fire nature of a fire goddess will come out inevitably, it comes out. So I just want to see a show of hands. I have these people here. Um, and let me just look at Facebook. How many of you identify with um, fire goddess energy? Because I'm about to talk about that. Oh, Rachel, you're leaving the ABC store? <laughs> Hi, Angie. Hi, Yurani. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Yeah, Joseph, I'm going to get to that in a second for sure. Totally. And I'm glad that Joseph's weighing in because this talk is not just for women. We all have feminine divine principles within all of us. So thank you, Joseph, for weighing in. Um, okay. So, oh yeah, Amy, you're definitely fire. Okay. I, and I can see already uh, Amy and definitely Beth and myself are definitely in that uh, fire goddess energy. So here's some things you want to learn about those of us that exhibit the fire goddesses. What is fire? Fire is the element of transmutation. Fire is the element of the alchemist. So for those of us with the fire energy, um, first of all, in sacred geometry, we really connect to triangles because triangles is the mark of the alchemist. Actually, a triangle in a circle, in a square is the mark, is the alchemist uh, symbol. But we really identify with triangles because first of all, it is the triangle has been proven to be the strongest shape out of all the shapes. And that is what fire does to you. Fire makes you strong. It, it cleanses you um, and it strips away anything that is superficial. So what can we say about fire goddesses? They're very in your face. Uh, just take it as, as we are. Very bold, very strong, very courageous, right? Um, what else can we understand about fire? Fire is always changing material. It comes into contact with. So you will find that fire goddesses tend to be catalysts, okay? They tend to promote change. They can't just go to a, a work and just sit there and be like a secretary. I remember one time I was hired at a job for, as a secretary and two months later, I was running the whole organization <laughs> because that's what fire goddesses do. Bet to, yep, right? You just kind of like, um, yeah. And you know, for those of you that are like sitting here, like, I don't know what I am. I want you to know that I've been working for years on rolling out a deck and a course and a quiz and a workshop about all this work that I'm telling you. So, you know, don't worry. It's something that has been like planning in my mind for so long, um, but I have to embody all the principles for me to be able to teach on it. Okay, so um, with the fire energy, how do you know that you're, you're a fire goddess? You are, you tend to be bossy. You tend to really, you create conflict, but you don't create conflict because out of drama, you create conflict because you're not one to just sit quietly and, and take it as it is and just kind of like say, well, you know, we'll let it pass. 
you know, if, if you're in a group and somebody's doing something wrong and you're in that place of saying, you know what, I'll just let them have their say, that's not a fire goddess move. If you're like, I want to be polite, that's not a fire goddess move. A fire goddess will be like, why'd you say that? What the hell's wrong with you? Are you dumb? You know, that is a fire goddess move. So if you, for the life of you, can't imagine, yeah, I know you, Beth, you know, um, if you, for the life of you, can't imagine saying those things, you may not have the fire goddess qualities, but that's not to say you don't have like other goddess qualities. You just want to honor who you are. It took me a very long time to want to admit and own the fact that I am from the fire goddess lineage. I want it to be water. I want it to be air. I, of course, want it to be earth. I'm Capricorn, right? I want to be earth. But, you know, uh, that Sag rising part of me really identified because I just feel that, you know, and, and I have friends all the time that will warn me, okay, Uma, everything's good now. We, we've sorted out between you and the other person. Everything's good. Just don't worry about anything. Guess what Uma's going to do? And another thing, <laughs> right? open that box of worms all over again. And then you could see my friends just going there like, oh my God, you know? And, and, and that's just the thing. There's this fire that's raging within you because those of you that are on the fire goddess path, you're here to create change. Quite simple. You are here to create change. So if you find yourself keep going in that direction, understand that there's a call on your life to be a motivator, to be an inspirer, to be a catalyst. And you probably will not fit in 90% of the time wherever you go. Because fire can't exist with anything else. It burns it. Okay? It burns it. So that's the fire goddesses. Um, let me take some comments or questions. Those of you on Zoom, you can unmute yourself and comment. Those of you on Facebook, you can. Um, Amy wrote, I feel I have a combination of earth and fire. We all have combinations, but from what I've learned and from the way I, I you can't serve two masters. Let me put it to you that way. And if you, if you aren't sure, then the goddess path hasn't called to you yet. So for those of you that are really like, we haven't gotten to the other three. If you're really stuck, understand that the initiations come when it's time. Okay. So if you're not really identifying, that's okay. That's okay. It will come in time. All right. Questions, comments. Let me hear. And you know, I had to start with fire because that's my lineage. That's my jam. Is there a lineage for water? Oh yeah, I'm gonna like talk on all four of them, but I just wanted to see if anybody had any questions about the fire one first. And I'm just gonna let you guys know <laughs> before, cause I know the question is gonna come up. Where do you get this information from Uma? Channeled, channeled. I was talking to uh, a very dear friend of mine earlier today and um, I was telling her about, you know, all this stuff that I receive and how it's channeled. And I was like, I don't know how people would take this. And she's like, Uma, you definitely are mystery school, like all over you. She's like, I wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years. Like I see you in a black cape everywhere you go and all hush hush. And you got like this underground cave with some students that you're teaching. She's like, I love it. You just, you just naturally effortlessly stream, you know, uh, information. And, um, so for any of you that are kind of like, I need to know the book knowledge of this, you might want to no. sign off right now because it's a, a lot of this is coming from information I received. Yes, Beth. So um, how do I, you know, okay. So I know I offend a lot of people and I end up losing a lot of people because I speak my truth. And especially here, people in this area, People do not want to hear the truth. So the thing is, is you won't be able to. The path of the fire goddess is really quite lonely, right? When you look at Kali Ma, mm -hmm. Kali Ma from Hinduism, yeah, um, she's depicted as the bad goddess because she's drenched, uh, painted all black, mm -hmm. has several hands, and she's holding the head of a person, which actually it's the head of um, ego. She's cut off the head of ego. And she's always like, ah, 
ah, like with her you know, tongue sticking out because she's kind of like, you know, her tongue sticking out is representing I speak truth, right? So right. You, when you see all the goddesses and like, you know, these goddesses cartoons or movies and stuff, happy and Kalima is in the distance by herself in a cave somewhere. So fire <laughs> goddesses, yeah. Um, when you think of fire, it burns everything in sight. Your best bet is finding other fire people. Well, I think in all honesty, I think it's actually good to be a fire goddess. The reason is that I don't feel that a lot of people find they aren't true to themselves. Therefore, they don't find their tribe. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is that um, I saw you with a microphone, by the way. Um, you know, like those, um, like those hand, you know, where you listen. Mm -hmm. So, and you're speaking in front of a, lot, a huge, large audience. Aww. Just want you to know that I saw you exactly. there, and I don't know when that's going to happen, but I feel it will. So there we'll you go. Next year, that's my <laughs> message to you. So, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Beth. And you're we welcome. just had the lovely Bonita join us. Hi, another divine goddess. So, hey, Bonita. Bonita. I'm so excited. I love when my friends show up. I'm, yeah. I'm my goodness. Thank you. My Friday night opened up, so I ran over here. I love it because we always have fun on Friday nights. And this will be a great topic for you to jump in on. You know how funny spirit is, Benita? One of <laughs> yeah. Rob and I do um, spirit chat and we pick a topic. And last month we did the Divine Masculine and Rob and Carlos came on and talked about their point of view about the divine masculine and when we had to do this event tonight which is a divine feminine i was kind of like i wish bonita would do this with me because we're the divine feminines in the group now get this i can't find rob anywhere <laughs> i've tried calling him and texting him um somebody might have kidnapped my man it's all good and um he'll come back when he needs to come back <laughs> and i i'm sitting here and i'm like I'll do this on my own, but it would have been really cool. So I think I manifested you to come here tonight. I, I think you did because um, I um, normally on Friday we do family night, but last night the uh, event I was supposed to be part of I ended up needing to take an evening where I wasn't. And so we did family night last night. So tonight everyone's like, yeah, whatever. So you know, I, I made dinner for everyone and my dad and I finished cleaning up the kitchen and then suddenly it popped in my head, you need to join Uma's group. I was planning on going through this backlog of work I have waiting for me, but I was told I need to join your group. So I'm like, I know when that voice comes in my head, I got to do what it says. So here I am. So Thank happy. you spirit friends for drawing her here. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say for that. And that, my friends, is how synchronicity works, because I really wanted Benita on this call more than Rob. I love you, Rob, but I just felt that Benita would have been a, a very better fit. Okay, so Benita, I was just talking about the archetypes of the goddesses and how I've been working up for years on creating my very first deck. And I wanted to create the deck, like I want to create a quiz that people can take about which goddess archetype they fall under. And I want to write a book about it and I want to do a retreat about it and actually make like a deck about it. And um, I'm hearing, I'm hearing somebody saying, Uma, don't share all that yet. Somebody might steal your idea. They can try. That was promised to me years ago. So yeah. wh whoever's what, like they can try. Like that was promised to me for so long because I love the goddess traditions. Mm -hmm. So um, I started talking about the fire goddesses because I am on the fire goddess path, you know? And when you think of fire goddesses, the archetypes you're looking at are the warrior goddesses. So when you think Freya, who was a warrior goddess, when you uh -huh. think Kali Ma, Kali was a, uh, is a warrior goddess. Um, who else, Benita, that we can think Athena. of? Um, Athena. Oh gosh, Athena, right? Mm -hmm. Athena is definitely a warrior goddess. So those of us that are on the fire goddess path, I'm just gonna recap before I move on to the next one. We are catalysts for change. We are bold, we are brassy, we're sassy. Most of us will have very um, temperamental relationships because our fire can burn bright. Beth was just explaining that and saying that it's been hard for her to keep friends. And, you know, it, it's when you think about fire, it burns everything in sight. So unless you can come up with a friend who's like, you know, 
some sort of indestructible ore of iron or metal or something that can't be, you know, harmed by fire is what you're looking for to constitute your tribe. But let's go to the absolute opposite of the fire, which is the water goddesses. So for those of you that are in the water goddess lineage, you really have the most golden hearts. You are the carers, the nurturers, the, you know, the, the taking care of everyone, the sensitives. I find a lot of water goddesses are the empaths that um, are like used like a doormat. They let everybody trample all over them as they take care of everybody else. It actually brings them a lot of joy to want to take care of people because that's how they find their strength and they, and they feel like some sort of self-worth in taking care of other people. So you, time, you tend to find the water goddesses like married or with children, or if they're not married, they are very loving moms and nurturers and supporters. They take care of their ailing parents when they're getting older, okay? The water goddesses um, for me would be like Kuan Yin, um, Lakshmi, who else? I'm drawing a blank and I should probably get my goddess deck and start looking at that. So, um, Bonita, you want to talk anything about the water goddesses? I'm literally going to go grab my deck. Uh, sure. But actually, I mean, in this life, I've always worked with the uh, fire goddesses, which would not be a surprise to anyone as my careers were a volcanologist and then a chef. And, you know, the one thing those two careers have in common is you're moving quickly with things that can cut you and burn you. Um, and so, for water goddesses, um, the one thing, you know, but my family were big kayakers. We're on the water all the time. The one thing that I'm always reminded is all life, all physical life, all physical life requires water as part of its being. You cannot have life on our planet without water. Plants need water. You know, every living being has water and the flow of water is the flow of life. So, um, and that has been honored in every culture, every culture. So, so yeah, I'm like, now I'm looking at the cards and I'm like, ooh, now I remember. Yeah, the, and the water goddesses are about like the, and I figured you were fire goddess, Benita, because that was one of the things that came up when I wanted to answer Beth, like you got to find other fire goddesses to be around because they can understand your temperament and they can handle your energy. They don't back down from it because they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's what she's having. You know, it is what it is, but here's some ideas of some, um, of some fire goddesses. There's Pele, right? with the volcano. That's where I worked. I worked in at the volcano observatory in Hawaii. That's so amazing. Pele was with me every moment of my life there. What about Ishtar? I love Ishtar. And then um, Freya, I was talking about Freya. Freya rocks, fierce warriors. Yep, Brigitte, mm. another fierce warrior. Um, yes. Let you do not want to mind. cross her. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rachel and Teresa, can you guys check on Facebook and tell me if I have any questions coming in while I sort through this deck really quickly to get you guys some more ideas of what I'm talking about? Um, and with the water goddesses, um, they really are about love and like, okay, for water goddess, Mary Magdalene. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. true. Um, Damara is about children, taking care of children. Mm -hmm. Sulis, anything with water, bodies of water. Sulis uh, comes in asking to spend time with water. Isolt, undying love, bringing love for relationships. Of course, we know about Guinevere, you know, the, the great love between Guinevere and Lancelot in uh, old King Arthur days. I didn't know that she was water. Very cool. Yeah, anything to do with love. Remember water and emotions. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And then Aphrodite, of course, we know that Aphrodite would be definitely a water goddess because well, she rose up from the water. She was birthed from the water in the lotus flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the lotus flower. Um, and then we have mother Mary. She's like one of the definite 
water goddesses, lots of love and nurture. And then I started by saying Quan Yin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see what else I can share with you. So that's the water goddesses. Um, <laughs> Bet says, <laughs> I want to be a water goddess my next mm -hmm. life. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I think we all do incarnate, right? Like we try it out differently. I'm definitely, I actually love being fire goddess. I'm so drawn. Like, and remember what I'm sharing with you guys is just my thoughts as I've been creating these courses and stuff. Right. So for like the, the fire goddess, I had said that, um, we, we have the, the shape of the triangle because the triangle is symbolic of alchemy and what is fire, but alchemical transmutation. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, for the water goddess, it's the circle. So if you're drawn to like circles, um, the circle of life, you know, things of that nature, then you would have the water goddess energy on that. Yeah. And certainly um, all of these elements can cross each other. But when, um, when you think about the effect one has on another, like when water and fire meet, you either get boiling steam or the fire goes out. So when they meet, it's either extremely active which is not necessarily a bad thing it can mm -hmm. be a huge creative you know growth or one overwhelms and destroys the other but when you combine earth and fire everything shakes up that's when you get earthquakes and volcanic eruptions you know oh. also yeah and also like water and fire is lightning in a thunderstorm so again like think about how the elements combine and if you're a water person and you're working with a fire person, it's either going to be, you know, extremely prolific, not necessarily in a, a dramatic way. It could be when you get together to work on a project, everything flows in a way you couldn't imagine because water is bringing their active energy and fire is bringing their combustive energy. And, and that might be how like the next great Broadway musical is written. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. definitely they play well together. And Angie just wrote that she thinks she's water. And I know Angie, and I would say definitely, you're 100% in my book, water, for sure. Uh, they're just very nurturing. And it's the giver of life is the water energy. So whereas fire has the power to take away life, um, water has the power to give life and sustenance. So um, one of my favorite water goddesses is Yamanaya. She's the Brazilian goddess of the ocean. And I identified with her strongly when I was growing up in um, Guyana because Brazil is right next to my country. So I knew much about Yamanaya when I was growing up and I love her. She just, she brings in so much, you know, um, water, life, nurturing, fertility too. So if you, you see like about, okay. Um, okay, so that's two that we talked about. So the third one would be the earth goddesses. The earth goddesses are really focused on stability, structure, formation, foundation. They are the guiding principles in the society, right? So let's say you have a community. We would have, let's say it was a community of women. Let's take men out of this picture for a second. It's just a community, a village, a village of women in the mountains somewhere. Your fire goddesses would be the warriors. They would be the ones going on the hunt for the kill, for protection of the village, the water goddesses would be the nurturers. They might be the ones like um, supplying, um, you know, the uh, the medicine, if you will, the medicine and the um, the care of the elderly and the children and things like that. The earth goddesses would be um, kind of like the ones that are the farmers and the herbalists and providing food and, you know, making clothes for the village. Can you understand that? So they're very grounded, they're very solid, and they want to see how they can help community in a structured way. So we have Vesta, who is concerned with the home. We have Mawu, who's concerned with earth. So earth goddesses, I find, really love nature. They love being in nature, um, praying in nature, healing nature. I, I met this earth goddess. She was one of my students a while back and she learned everything she could from me. And 
she didn't want to change the world. She wanted to go and she would go stand over large bodies of water and do Reiki on the water or pray over the water, you know? And I was just like, but there's nobody there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she's like, no, the water is there, mm -hmm. right? So that would be the earth goddess. Um, they love the animals. They love the earth and they want to ensure that it, it carries on, okay? Uh, Coventina for purification, mm. right? Because the earth goddesses also take really good care of their bodies, right? Because it's all about being one with nature. Uh, the earth goddesses, uh, well, I think all goddesses respond to the moon, but I think it's for different reasons. So the earth goddesses would be more out of um, ritual and it's almost like a religion for them with the moon. The uh, fire goddesses would be more for power, right? Strengthen my power, Zeus almighty, you know? Um, strengthen me, Isis. And then you would have the, the water goddesses um, just really loving to worship the moon out of ritual. They love ritual. So Cordelia is another earth goddess about connecting with nature. Uh, there's an angel, uh, Archangel Ariel, that I would say if she was, you know, incarnate on earth, she would be earth water because she's um, very uh, earth goddess because she's very much about nature and animals. And then I, I actually put Lakshmi under earth goddesses, not water, because Lakshmi is about bringing in prosperity, abundance. It's about marriage and families. She's the ultimate mother, uh, along with Durga Mai in Hindu tradition. So Lakshmi would be a really good earth goddess. So if you identify as an earth goddess. You left out two. Who? Demeter, the goddess of the harvest. Let me see if I have Demeter. And uh, Hestia. Okay. Hestia is not just the kitchen goddess. She's also the herbalist and the healer. So when all the other gods go off and have their stuff, when they come back, all like, dinged and dented and brokenhearted, she's the one they go to to put them back together. That is good for me to know. That will be part of, and that's the thing, you can't know like on all the goddesses. <laughs> Ronice thinks she's water, has an affinity for Aphrodite. There you go. See now how you're, you're finding your way. Nikki thinks she's 90% earth. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, and you'll start to find, um, when I start to do my courses on this, I will give you like quizzes and say, and like for me, the shape that is associated with the earth goddess would be the square. Why? Because the square is structured, stable, like a table. Think of a table, four legs, you know, it's, uh, it's not going anywhere. It's very grounded structure, right? So think about these things that you get drawn to. Like for me, it's always, since I was a little girl, it's always been triangles. It's almost like when I look at a triangle, I go into this other space. So for some of you, it might be the circle. You look at the circle and you go into this other space. For some of you, you look at a square and it's no longer a square. It's groundedness, earth, stability. And that draws you in. Okay. Okay. So if you had to like say in one word what each of the goddesses are so far, because we still have one more to go. So far, it would be fire goddess. I am here to create. Water goddess, I am here to nurture. Earth goddess, I am here to provide. So does that make that easier for you, right? Now, we come to one of my favorites, the part air goddess. Um, at one point, I almost thought I was all air goddess and I was like, no, no. <laughs> you can lie to yourself, Uma, but the goddesses won't lie to you. Um, and the reason why I thought I was a uh, air goddess is because I have a high capacity for knowledge and wisdom and intellectual conversation and intellectual stimulation. And one of the first goddesses that came to me was Siege. She came to me um, very strongly in a year when I really needed some guidance. And this is about going in, meditation, getting quiet. And when Siege came in, that was when I took a trip to Mexico with some girlfriends as like kind of like a sabbatical. I went and I climbed, no, I didn't climb Chichen Itza. I went, you know, climbing all around the place, not Chichen Itza because they don't let you on there anymore. But um, 
I just really needed and felt needed to go and be in nature and to, to reconnect to myself and siege helped me a lot. So for those of you that are air goddesses, you like to think, you like to analyze, you like to learn. Um, you're not so much about having the human experience in terms of food, sex, drugs, alcohol, um, relationships. You're more about what is this? What is this all about? You know, why am I here? What, what is this all about? So uh, Saraswati from the Hindu culture, because she's the arts. So that's again, knowledge. She's also of knowledge. A, a lot of students in Hindu, Hinduism, they pray to Saraswati, especially during exams to help them with their exams and stuff. Um, Irene is for peace, right? Because you'll find with air goddesses, they kind of walk that, uh, that line of being a mediator and resolving conflicts through thoughtful, thoughtful discussion. If King Solomon was a goddess, he would be an air goddess. <laughs> okay. Um, Rhiannon, sorceress. Matt for fairness. If you know about the goddess Matt, she's about justice and equality. So any, uh, if you see like Libras, Libras tend to be in that air goddess vibe. It's all about fairness and justice for all. I put Isis with the air goddesses because again, a lot of intellectual stimulation here and Isis just has so much abilities. She actually literally could be like mother of all. She can fit into all of them. And we have um, Donna, the high priestess for the air goddesses. So for the air goddesses, um, what can I say about them? Like, I, I just feel drawn to air goddesses because they're really focused on the intellectual. They're like the true spiritual seekers in life. You know, again, going back to that village, if we had a village just of women in the mountains, we have the fire goddesses would be the warriors. The water goddesses would be the nurturers of the village, the medicine women, if you will. The earth goddesses would be, you know, the herb herbologists and picking food and you know making food and all that kind of stuff the air goddesses would be running the village they would be the elders in the village because they would be the ones um making the plans and setting up the boundaries and stuff like that does that make sense yes yeah rachel says she feels like air and that's it like you get to choose amy said she's 100 percent fire yeah I, I don't know what amy was going with she's earth <laughs> I'm like, I, I just let people think what they want to think. I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> you know, Mitzi um, says she's air. Aww. She's all about everything being balanced and fair for her. <laughs> I just love the look she's giving. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think Freya, Odin's wife, would mm -hmm. be air because she was always about Fear. smoothing out the issues like Odin and the men would cause issues and Freya would come and fix everything. And you know, the reason why this has been so hard for me to go through, and this is a lesson for all of us, because there's so many goddesses, yeah, but placing them in, in the respective categories is difficult because who, let's be real here, ladies, who writes history? Mm. And the way these goddesses are portrayed are sometimes not in the best light. Right. So I have to go like off of reading the history and then tuning into the energy and saying, who were you really? What was your story? Like, for instance, I want to challenge you on something here for a second. Just bear with me, right? Um, let's think about that story of uh, Mitzi. <laughs> Mitzi. Mitzi's like, I know. She's like, I am so pissed off with this. I'm so tired of his story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was in high school in Guyana, we had a history teacher. She was a riot, Miss, Miss Chandra Narayan. And she, um, she started our first history class by saying, well, you know what they say, it's his story. And I'm like, who is this lady? <laughs> you know. <laughs> at, at the time, I did not appreciate her, her <laughs> goddess energy, but um, I want to challenge you guys to think about a story, um, not Adam and Eve, but to actually be like this story about um, what is the story with the 
the wicked stepmother. With every apple. story. Yeah, that it was the Snow White with the with the wicked stepmother with the apple. Remember? Yeah. Now look at this through a different lens. The story was the wicked stepmother was to marry the father and she was jealous of Snow White because she was so beautiful. And she banished, you know, Snow White and then she made a lady, an old lady give her an apple and then she ate the apple and then she fell into this deep slumber and stuff like that. You know, here's my thing. What if the story didn't go that way? What if the wicked stepmother comes into this life, right? And she's not, she's a woman who is, uh, in love with this man and wants to marry him, but she notices, she notices this man coddles this young girl and she's a princess. And by coddling her, she doesn't get to recognize her real powers and mm. just how strong she could be. So then she banishes her in the hopes of you will have to develop the powers within you. And then she gives her the apple, which we've heard about this apple before from the tree of knowledge with Adam and Eve. And it doesn't poison her. It puts her in a meditative space to unlock the energy within her. And before she could really come to full self-actualization, a stupid prince comes along and ruins it by kissing her. <laughs> right? And she falls back into the fantasy. She goes on and marries the prince and supposedly lives happily ever after. But I want you guys to start thinking for yourselves. That came to me when I read that story a long time ago. As a child, I was able to read that and say, wait a minute, why is this woman so bad? Why would an older woman be jealous of a young girl? You know? And nobody, I, I'm surprised that Hollywood actually that nobody has ever thought to do a different dynamic about that story and paint the wicked stepmother as this older woman wanting to free this young girl and say the power is within you you don't need a man go out there live the world find yourself mm -hmm. but the man wins the, the whole story is fraught with men even seven little ones <laughs> you know you know what? Um, in Norse mythology, they do have a story that very few people know about my favorite goddess, Gullvig. Gullvig is the uh, creator. She's the first feminist. And she's the creator of beer or alcohol. Mm -hmm. She's the tavern keeper of Asgard. There was a time when the men started treating the women very poorly and the women got mad. Freya said, come on, my female goddesses, let's pack up, we're out of here. These guys can stay in Asgard all on their own without us until they learn to treat us right. And what happened though, is without the female influence, the men fell into great disrepair. They didn't clean themselves. They didn't clean anything. They became disgusting. They were fighting all the time. They were like, you know, they just fell into the lowest state they could. Yeah. And the women were like, hmm, first of all, they're not apologizing. Secondly, now they're disgusting. We don't want to go anywhere near them. And thirdly, this is not working out well for us. We want to go home. So Freya created Golvig and gave her to the men as a gift saying, we're not coming home to you, but you guys are gross. So we have created a tavern and here is Golvig and she will give, fulfill your needs, you know, food and yeah. drink. And the men were like, oh, okay. So then Golvig by taking care of them and speaking them rationally, but none of them could ever touch her made them realize that they needed to be nurtured, they needed to be loved, and they needed the divine feminine in their lives or they were in bad shape. They had to be all or nothing. There was no like ability to have a little taste of women, but not all of women, a little taste of the balance without all of it. So they begged the women to come back and the women said, you got to shave and be less gross. And then they did. So Goldfig um, is the one who reminds 
the men that the divine feminine is necessary in their lives or they fall apart. Yeah, I love that. And um, Deborah said, I thought that story was about Sleeping Beauty. No, Deborah, Sleeping Beauty was locked away in a very, very high tower. And um, she was asleep uh, and she had long hair, right? Or am I mixing that up now with another story? No, no, the, the long hair was uh, Rapunzel. Oh, Rapunzel. But Sleeping Beauty was put to sleep. Uh, she pricked her finger on a spinning wheel That's and right. fell to sleep for a thousand years and the the fairy was very angry the dark fairy that she was left out of the uh the christening yeah about the yes yeah. that's right yeah so again when you look at history women have been portrayed very badly and especially to me the fire women the fire goddesses because we're the ones that speak out if you look at a lot of feminists they have radical fire just exploding out of them. Um, it's been hard, like for me as a fire goddess woman, it's hard to be in relationship because you can have a loving, caring, sensitive, wonderful man, but your anger at so many years and centuries of female abuse, it courses through your veins and you can't help but take it out on the men around you. Thank God I have a very earth God man who has a lot of earth to put my fire out sometimes and just say, he, Rob has this saying where he says, um, the world is out there, go fight your battles and then come home to me when you're done. <laughs> because I do have a lot of fire and I get angry about so many things and it's anger, not just for my, my livelihood and my day, but for my ancestors and women who came before me and who had to put up with a lot of crap that they had to put up with just to exist, you know? So if you feel that energy raging in your, in your veins and in your blood, you probably are a fire goddess, okay? If you feel that anger, but you handle it very intellectually, maybe by getting policies changed in the favor of women and stuff, you might be an ear goddess. If you are very angry, but you soothe it by saying, I will now raise better men to be part of a better future, you're probably a water goddess, right? and an earth goddess in, in that matter of, of speaking. So we all have that anger within us at our ancestral women and our community of women that have come before us, but it's how we choose to react and how we choose to use our power. So the divine feminine is in all of us. What you wanna do is you wanna honor her. Fire goddesses, stop dimming your shine. We need you. We need you. We are the protectors of all the women. So we need you to speak up. We need you to say right is right and wrong is wrong. And we need you to live your life unapologetically because we are giving validation to the other goddesses that they can do it themselves. Water goddesses, we need you to keep loving unconditionally and showing the, the, the strong side of unconditional love Air goddesses, we need your intelligence. We need you to speak up and not be mansplained. We need you in those boardrooms saying, no, I will have a say. You will not speak for me. I will speak for myself. Earth goddesses, we need you to show just how damn well you could provide and that you don't need a man and that you can do it on your own. So whatever goddess lineage you follow, we still have a requirement for all of you to act your roles. Because some of you might say, well, I'm a water goddess. I can kind of chill out in the back here. <laughs> Let the fire goddesses do all the fighting. Yeah, but we get tired. We get tired. We all have to fulfill our roles. And the only way we can fulfill our roles is by doing what we know to do best. Rachel says, I feel like all my female ancestors are listening to this talk right now. They're clapping. They're standing here. They're applauding me and Benita for being very bold and saying what we, you know, what we're saying. Um, I'm surprised Facebook hasn't shut us down yet. <laughs> Let me just check. No, we're still going. We're still going. So what are your thoughts um, as we end this talk? Because I'm going to be jumping over soon. By the way, if you're on Facebook watching this, I will be coming in to the Lotus and the Light Facebook group to do free readings at 8.30. So if you are around, you're more than welcome to join us. What are your thoughts? 
ladies. Uma, can you feel influences from other goddesses at different points of your life? I mean, you know, there's, I, you know, I, I think I put myself in one category, but when you're talking about fire, it's like, you know what, I've done this. I, I felt this, I have done these things. So. Yeah, the beautiful thing about goddess community and goddess tribe is we all help each other. It is very plural in this aspect. So I have been fire goddess since birth. My dad would say, he would tell people, when she was three years old, if she was mad at me, she would pass me in the hallway. And then if I'm walking, she would turn her face. She wouldn't even look at me. <laughs> she, I would be so mad at my dad. I wouldn't even look at it. three. Who could walk at three years? Like tiny little me would just walk and not look at him. And then she, he's gone for weeks until I felt ready to talk to him again. So I've always been fire. However, in my development, in my development, I've had other goddesses come in to help me. The air goddesses taught me temperance. The water goddesses taught me forgiveness. The earth goddesses taught me grounding. If they, if those three did not affect me, I would have burned myself out a long time ago. I might've committed suicide because I did try. The anger can consume you, right? So in life, you will spend time with each goddess. It's kind of like you're like Benita and I do Akashics. And we know that there is like one original soul group you belong to. But have you been every single soul group at some point in time? Absolutely. I'm originally Pleiadian. But have I been Arturian or Syrian or Mintakan? Absolutely. Right? So you have probably cycled through lives where you've been water or earth or fire, even though you're air now. And that's why they all identify to you. But the trick is, is finding your way back home. You got to go back to your original archetype because that lineage is calling you to do something, not just for yourself, but for the greater global collective consciousness of the feminine divine. We're all part of the web and we all have a role to play. There's some of you that are just gonna be really good at talking and writing and explaining things, you gotta do that. There's gonna be some of you that are really good at nurturing, you gotta do that. Can you do all? Of course, I can do all, I can talk really well, I can write really well, I can cook really well, I clearly can provide for myself in a household, I've been a single mom for 10 years now, I can do all of them, but my joy comes in the alchemy, the transformation, the transmutation, and I, focus all of my energy there because that is my contribution to the collective web. Bonita's contribution to the collective web is also fire in creating an expansion and transmuting, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely love alchemy as well. But for me, um, I mean, I do get a fire in my gut. And I have spent many years working with masters on how I manage my energy, not my energy managing me. Um, I had a number of years where I had a very hot temper. I would be very reactive. And, but I knew that if I'm going to be a teacher and a healer, I must be active, not reactive. So I use all the elements Otherwise the fire would consume me. So I use all the elements so that my fire is effective and works well with the other elements. My native tongue is fire, but I am fluent in elemental languages. <laughs> yeah. So what do you guys think? I, I see Rachel said, Beth said, come together all goddesses. It's time for all women to have oh a my voice. God, to have a voice. Yeah. Um, can I personally, um, for me, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Personally, for me, it's been very interesting because I've always worked in male-dominated in industries where the female voice is unheard or silenced. And I wish more women would be in these industries because it makes it impossible for me to have a voice 
And then many times I just don't even bother anymore um, because it's, you know, women are attracted to the, you know, the female, a lot of my friends teaching, et cetera. But when you go into other organizations where women are not um, the leads, you know, then it makes it very difficult. Not that I don't speak up, but um, I, I want other women and young women to begin to be more powerful and not to subjugate themselves because a man has a voice greater than theirs. Interestingly enough, just in my studies alone, because like I said, I've been studying women for quite some time as this is my passion and where I really want mm -hmm. to have a platform on. What I've noticed is a lot of fire goddesses choose uh, industries that is men related or men dominant. Because I have, I did. Yep. You know, in healthcare, when I was at those board meetings, it was everybody was a man but me. And um, the ones that were the other goddesses, like air and fire would really choose men dominated fields. They had that like, chutzpah, if you will, to handle it. Um, the ones that were like water and earth goddesses, what I noticed was in those industries, they were taken advantage of and in a way took it. Now, I have to be very careful how I say this because I am by no means saying that any woman has allowed sexual abuse. I'm not saying that at all. I agree. But here's what I'll tell because I'm a victim of sexual abuse several times in my life. And here's what I'll tell you about the difference with sexual abuse, the fire goddesses, the air goddesses will tend to fight back or get themselves out of a situation. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I see them judging other women because they're the ones to say, you shouldn't have worn that. Or why were you in his hotel room at, at two o'clock in the morning? It don't matter why, that was her choice. She can do what she does. But I did find that for sometimes these water and earth goddesses are a little bit more believing and trusting than say the fire and the air, because the fire and the air are already in a way um, divining what's gonna happen. Well, mm -hmm. I, I have to say this, I protected a lot of younger women. Yeah. Because now I have a voice. And I remember we were in um, Kingston, Jamaica, and this guy took this young woman's hotel room card and put it in his pocket. I took it out of his pocket, <laughs> I said, that is not yours. Oh my God. He, Did you see every set of I here just like? I know. He said, who do you think you are? I said, you were, he said, you weren't invited here. I said, you weren't invited here. The beer you're drinking is mine and you are not, you are not welcome. And what I'm trying to teach young women is that when you have your voice, protect other women. I've done it a number of times and I'm so happy because I didn't have a voice for decades, but now I why it's so important we all live our paths because you see the fire goddesses really, you remember going back to the olden days, they were the warriors. Mm -hmm. And we can't expect water goddesses and earth goddesses to a thousand percent find that voice enough to stand up. They're still developing in that realm of not seeing the man here and they're here. That's why when you hear that are in abusive relationships. A lot of you that are fire and air will be like, oh, I would never be in that. You don't know what's going on in here for a while. Well, that's not fair. That's not fair because you know, I'm fire <laughs> and I've never said that to a woman. But, but we're not talking so, about you, Benita. We're there's so, a lot of women. I, I agree do. with you. I, I but guess. What, what I'm saying is as we, each of us as our element have our issues where we're strong and our issues where it would be nice if our sisters supported us and we feel like we're out there alone. But that's as what I'm fire, saying. That's exactly if, what I'm saying. I'm saying that yeah. when I, I, listen, when I was raped at a very young age, a friend of mine told me I deserved it because I was in this place with this man, what did you think was going to happen? So mm -hmm. I will not turn a blind eye to the fact that there are women out there who will not hesitate to judge. Oh, yeah. Just because you won't do it, Benita, does not no. mean that other women that's, won't do it. So that's what I'm no. saying. I'm a fire yeah, god too, and I would never say to somebody, oh my gosh, right. you deserve that. 
Now, I've been told many times in my life when I've been kicked hard when I didn't deserve it by other women, oh, you deserved it because you went out there and you stood strong. Mm-hmm. So of course, it, I don't stand strong. I let the men do what they want. And now look, I'm promoting up and you're getting fired. Or what I'm saying is, um, I don't think it's one element, but I do think all elements of women need to stand together because we have our areas of power and where we have our areas where we should get support. But I'm so gonna, long as we're, we're separated, yeah, we can get knocked down. I'm going to mm-hmm. remind you that I started the conversation by saying in my experience, right. The women, no, I, yeah. I'm not speaking for the world. So if anybody's listening to that or, or picking up what Benita is picking right. up, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm right. saying in my experience, because I can very easily tell who's water, air, earth, fire. It's just mm-hmm. it's natural to me. That's my gift. That's what I can do. And the women who are water and earth tend to be very nurturing to mm-hmm. someone else who's going through something. The people that I find that are more judgmental of women going through things, nine times out of 10, tend to be fire women and uh, air women. I will, I will stand by that because I've seen it happen enough. Mm-hmm. You know, is there a water woman out there that can judge another water woman for being raped? Absolutely, absolutely. There's no standardized anything for anyone, but the majority of cases I have seen in my 42 years of life has been that situation. And that's why I'm doing these talks Mm -hmm. and creating these books and these courses because fire women and air women have a lot of power to create change. And exactly what Beth said, we need to be a community, Mm -hmm. but we're not being a community, are we? We're not in a community when a woman says, this man assaulted me and he's a celebrity And then there's other women picking up and saying, well, you know, he's like a nice guy. Did he really? Um, I don't know. I find it hard to believe. And we, and I'm not saying we should just blindly trust what another woman is saying, but for me, whenever anybody says like, okay, when the first thing came out about Bill Cosby. Oh, I thought it. Well, it was shocking for, and it's 808 as I say this, I know my truth is coming out right about now. I didn't, I didn't know what to think because Bill Cosby was like my TV dad, right? Mm -hmm. I grew up with Bill Cosby, watching the Cosby show, looking at him like a TV dad. But when it first came out, I didn't disagree and I didn't agree. I was in shock and I knew well enough to hold my thought, my opinion, because I said, this is bad. This is really bad. I wonder, because in my head, I went to this woman knows she's accusing America's dad Mm -hmm there must be some truth here. That was my first thought. I didn't want to know it. I didn't want to believe it, but I trusted that woman to say, why would she bring this upon herself? Nobody would want to bring this upon themselves, you know? And then all like 27, 30, whatever, 45, 45 start coming in. And then you're like, all right, now, not only is she like a leader, right? But that's, and that's, that's a really good case to show what we can do when we support each other. I mean, I'm a fire, but I have been both victim. Me too. So I don't feel that way. I don't, I'm not one judging women. I support yeah. them. I have never been the one to say, I think you're making this up. I'm the one saying, you know, kick ass girl, fight back. I've never been, I've never been in my entire life ever doubted women and their opinion or their abuse ever. It's hard when you get judged. Like for me, I've been judged my whole life and it's usually by women. And it's always been hard for me being, choosing to be on the goddess path and wanting to create the goddess community. It's been hard for me because I just, in my mind, I I don't just see this life. I see all our past lives. And I see like, how could you do this to me? We were at the temple of Artemis. Mm-hmm. We were pouring water together. We were doing ritual. Like, how could you do this to me? And it's just insane how far left we've gone with a lot of things. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think that um, in my experience with most of the female friends I have had, they lack backbone. 
And um, I can't change that. So then I challenge you to taking care of, which I have not. Right. So I just so, move them forward and let them move on. Because the ones that you say that don't have backbone, they may actuality be water or earth archetypes. And then what is our position as fire to protect? I have a lot of water goddesses in my life that are my friends and they can't do a lot of what I do. And I know in my, in my commitment, my contract with them, it's really just to provide a safe space for them. A lot of my students are, you know, water, earth, air, and they don't have the chutzpah I have. They don't have the fight that I have. And that's okay. That's okay. But they, they should know well enough. Every single student of mine, whether they're still with me or not, they should know well enough. If I'm ever in trouble, I can go to Uma. Uma will be there for me. Uma will show up for me. Uma will protect me. I've like, students have called me for the craziest things. I've had to show up to hospitals. I've had to show up to people's houses on behalf of students because that's my reputation in this community. Uma will fight for me no matter what. But that's, this is what I'm trying to say, guys. When you embody your archetype and then you are very clearly known in your community for who you are, that is part of your service right there, if not all of your service. You don't actually need to be doing things. You just really need to embody your archetype. So then people could say, oh gosh, I really need, I really need advice. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm just picking names there. I'm going to go to Marinda because she, she's just really good with that. I, I really need somebody to care for me. I'm just going to go to Rachel. She's really, I need somebody to fight for me. I'm going to Uma, you know, and they can't, but people can't know. Women can't know unless you live your archetype. And again, all my opinions, all my opinions. So you guys like Bonita can disagree and Beth can agree, disagree. It's okay. But what I want, to, I really want to be clear about is I have this drive to call the goddess community together. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been putting up goddess circles and goddess story time, and I'm creating this goddess deck and this goddess book and stuff like that, because I still have belief that if we come together, right? And if we work through the shadows of what's holding us back, we can be so powerful. We can change the world. I believe it. Deborah says an archetype in alignment is different from one out of alignment. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not making any generalizations. I'm just saying that from my personal experience, the women who have been judgy or competitive or causing trouble or putting others down have been my group. <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, but it's been my fire group. And, you no. know, we, we got to do better. Can I jump in there on something? Because um, as your fellow fire, I have seen, I feel like it's a, we are not educated as women to empower each other in the way where we most support each other. Most of us think we empower each other by saying, be like me, as opposed to being like you and let's mesh together. As a fire, I can't tell you how many times I have gone forward. And then later, the air and the water women say, I knew you would fail. That's why I helped sabotage you. You know, I knew you would fail because I didn't understand your vision. Or if I go forward and I succeed, later they'll say, I couldn't see it until you showed it to me. And now I see it, I get it. And, you know, it, it's really good. Can I sign my name on it and take credit with you? Like, so that was part of why I was so automatically reactive when you were saying the fire people are judgy because I've received so much negative judgment from water and air. Not 100%. But I, what I think is each of us, and I think this is what you're saying, each of us must fully embrace and empower within our element. And then weave our elements with our sister's elements so that we can be as empowered as those 40 some women who stood against Bill Cosby. I love it. So that, I, agree, yeah. I agree with you a thousand percent. And like with the chakras, right? There's mm -hmm. the lower energy of the chakra and the higher energy of the chakra. So the lower energy of the heart chakra would be jealousy, 
codependency, needing a relationship, the higher energy of the, sharp, the heart chakra, if you develop it, would be unconditional love, freedom and love, acceptance, right? Same thing with goddess power. We all have that yin and that yang, and you have to like work out and you have to stretch your goddess muscles to say, I want to exhibit the higher qualities. Because what is the lower quality of the fire goddesses? Competition right? What is the lower um, qualities of the earth goddess? Greed, right? What is the lower energy of the water goddesses? Codependency, insecurity. What is the lower energy of the air goddesses? Insecurities, non-belief in self, you know, not, not worthy, lacking self-worth. We all have our lower energies. So it's a constant struggle but I really truly believe that in time you could reach a place where you just are exhibiting those higher qualities. And then, then the magic happens. How do I know that? Because it happens at Lotus. I've had Lotus, my center for 11 years. And I have seen with my own eyes when goddesses come together and we heal ourselves and we work on our inner struggles and we're truthful about it. I have seen what we can do in the community. We have raised money for charities. We have provided community service. We have done so many things over the years that I could not, even as a fire goddess, could not do on my own. And I'm thankful for the women and for the women who were, went before you, even if I don't talk to them. Bonita knows there's some of them that really did me wrong, but yet I still thank them because they were part of creating the structure that we still have right now. You know, so this has been good. I think you guys like talks on goddesses. <laughs> and do you see how me and Benita are? That's fire right there. And I love it because I love her because she is true to her word and she's open and honest. And that's what I, I desire in people is to have that open, honest communication. And, you know, it's easy to understand now why Benita believes what she believes because of her own experience. She had that experience, which will now cause me to think about that. Because in my experience, I've never had a water goddess really betray me. They were too busy for me being insecure or codependent in love or whatever else they're caught up in to like really say, come after me, if you will. Bet said, thank you, Uma and Benita, powerful. It is time for feminine energy. The, the, Benita, how long has the feminine divine been in place? Like, was it 2010 or 2001? Like when the, uh, the butterfly came in over the US? Um, how long has it been? Well, I am telling you, it has been a good 5,000 years since we've been pushed out of place. It is time for us. I think 6,000 years. It is time for us to come back and rebalance everything. You know what's funny? I'm, I'm like shuffling the deck to put it back. And this is what fell out. So this is a message for all of us. Ostara fertility. It is the perfect time for you to start new projects, access new ideas, and give birth to new conditions. So fellow female goddesses, you know, I'm going to be starting back goddess circles at Lotus. And goddess circles are very ritualistic. You know, we tend to have them on a moon night, like a full moon or a new moon night. Um, and you're allowed to wear whatever you wear. People have come dressed in capes or in fairy costumes and wings. It is all welcome. It, it brings in the, the feminine divine energy. Um, there's a lot of candles. So be careful with your capes and stuff so you don't get burned, <laughs> burned to death. <laughs> Had a little ritual. Um, and, and it is. And we, you know, we sing songs. We, we do something for the harvest. And we just, uh, we just come together like we did in the old days. And whenever I have those circles, it's really just channeled information from whichever goddess is working with me on that event and saying, this is what I'd like you know, um, and, and this is what we'll do. So you're all welcome to come to goddess circles when we, and you know, what was funny, I was doing them and they were packed. There were full events at my, my center. And then because I got too busy, I, I tend to say, okay, I'll, I'll take somebody like a student or say, okay, you go ahead and handle this and you, you run it. And there was a woman who was running. Um, she used to work with me and she was running the goddess circles and nobody would come. Nobody would come. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, that broke my heart. And I was like, what happened? And then the goddesses told me, you, Uma, mm -hmm. you're a fire. You bring them together. So you have to, you can't pass that obligation off. Like you have to do it. 
So I said, okay, once we can be back out in person um, and, you know, back out and together, we'll have goddess circles again. All right. So I'm going to be saying bye to you guys. Bonita, you are more, would you like to come and join me for free readings tonight or would you just? Sure. Let me just do a quick message to, um, on my Facebook page and then I'll hop over on yours. All right. So what I'll do, because we can't do it in, oh, can we do it in Facebook? No, not really. We'd have to do a no. Zoom and then stream. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what we'll do is we will uh, do that. We will do a Zoom. Okay. And then for those of you that are LAT members, Lotus Academy, we will send you the link and mm -hmm. you're welcome to come join us here. And um, 8.30, we will be back on. <laughs> Rachel's putting her hands up. You're welcome, Deborah. <laughs> Deborah's like, I want the class soon. Not like I have a lot of work already, Deborah. She's like, get, get on that damn class. <laughs> yeah, no, this is perfect. I've got all my decks of cards here. So I would love to join you. I knew there was a reason I had put them away yet <laughs> so yeah give me five minutes to yeah. uh give a little message on my facebook page i'm and... gonna go get some more tea and then i will um send you the link and send everybody the link and then we'll be back on so everyone on facebook and for Bye. those of you that are online can you please promote that we're going to be on this is the page uh the lotus and the light group so um here's the group uh, i will drop it in this comments facebook.com slash groups slash the lotus and the light i will be streaming live into my group so um all people have to do is join it and then we will start soon bye guys okay. bye. uma do you want to just meet back on this link we'll just keep it keep it open oh yeah okay that's a good idea and then so i will stop streaming to my facebook page and then i can just stream to the group mm -hmm. excellent all right okay. so those of you that are on you can just stay on i'll be back in a couple minutes okay all right <laughs> bye bye